Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is September 28th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. So for this segment, I am going to provide for you my weekly Arctic sea ice climate and weather analysis. And to start off, I would just like to point out this announcement from the National Snow and Ice Data Center and NASA Earth, noting that Arctic sea ice reaches annual minimum extents on September 19th and then again on September 23rd of this year. NSIDC watched as the ice shrunk to 1.77 million square kilometers on both dates, tying 2008 and 2010 for the six lowest sea ice minimum extent on record. So, so the Arctic environment is, is starting to transition into fall and winter. We are starting to see a bit of refreeze and this season's end melt season ended up bottoming out at six lowest on record according to NASA and NSIDC. Looking at the JAXA graph, we see the begin of a rebound in sea ice extent here, looking at the red line over recent days, with the Arctic feeling the seasonal entry into fall and the beginning of refreeze season. It's worth noting that the present Arctic sea ice extent is approximately 3 million, that's a million with a capital M, square kilometers below averages during the 1980s and is about 1.1 million square kilometers above record lows for the date. At present, the Arctic is much warmer than normal. If you look at GFS model runs start for today, the Arctic is about 2.4 degrees Celsius above average, which is quite a bit warmer than normal for this time of year. And we see energy transfer primarily coming in through very large jet stream ridge zone over the Bering and Chukchi seas and in, extending into Alaska, associated with, with what appears to be warmer than normal sea surface temperatures influencing this transfer, and a large jet stream ridge running up in through central Siberia. As we get more and more into fall and winter, we will likely tend to see the ocean effects become more prevalent with energy transfers both in the Pacific and the Atlantic tending to run into the Arctic more and more. I want to go ahead and advance this model just to show you what GFS expects over the next 10 days. And in my opinion, it's, it's pretty stunning. So just over the next 24 hours, we end up, according to G, G, GFS, a 2.7 degrees Celsius anomaly for the Arctic as a whole, which is a pretty high departure for this time of year. But as we get into the coming days, the departures start to get up into the three degrees Celsius range on October 1st, just, just by Monday. And then running into next week, we see a lot of heat in the GFS model building up in the high Arctic region with temperature anomalies stretching into about 15 degrees Celsius above average for some locations. And over this time period, quite a lot of heat moving from the ice-free ocean zones into the high Arctic with anomalies for the Arctic as a whole hitting close to four degrees Celsius above average by October 7th, by, so by next Sunday in the GFS model. That's, that's an extraordinary spike for this time of year. And in this model, you can see the great deal of energy transfer rising up in through the Pacific as well as through the prevailing ridge zone over central Siberia, which seems to be taking hold. We'd also like to note that these, this ridge zone 
in the Bering and Chukchi Sea region in over Alaska is also tending to generate a countervailing trough over Canada and the central and eastern U.S., which appears to be developing a rather stormy pattern for this area. I'd like to also state that extreme ridge trough patterns have been a, a signature element of, of winter seasons for North America in particular, and that there appears to be an influence of polar warming on these enhanced ridge and trough zones, with the ridge zones tending to feature much warmer than normal and drier than normal temperatures, particularly over the U.S. West, parts of Western Canada and Alaska, and the trough zones featuring cooler temperatures and stormier conditions for the U.S. East. We're gonna have to see if that sets up, but I'd just like to note that those patterns have a, a, a connection with polar amplification and polar warming in that warming at the pole tends to increase the waviness of the jet stream during that season and these the prevalence of these extreme dipole weather patterns that we have tended to see. I'd just like to also talk again about sea surface temperature anomalies. And we see very extreme sea surface temperature anomalies in the Bering and Chukchi Sea. And to me, this indicates that the, there will tend to be a prevalence for, for ridge zone patterns in this region and energy transfer into the Arctic from that zone. Around the Arctic sea ice right now, sea surface temperatures are much warmer than normal in general, but this zone is really hot. We can certainly see the, the ridge pattern in today's GFS model in the, the jet stream observational model with the jet stream running up through the Bering and Chukchi Seas, providing this inf energy transfer that, that I've been talking about quite a lot with the countervailing trough running in through the east, uh, in, in through parts of Canada near Hudson Bay and dipping down into the Great Lakes region of the US. Over the next day or so, the ridge pattern amplifies through Alaska and the Chukchi, while the trough pattern tends to bow out a bit. Just something to keep an eye on for overall trends and impacts to, to freeze season, as we might see freeze season stall a bit if we see these anomalies kick up to as high as they are projected in the GFS model run. What we're looking at now, I'm transitioning over to a NASA worldview shot of the pole as fall progresses, we will tend to see more of this satellite shot blacked out as the act as the earth tilts more away from the sun and apparently more away from the the satellite imagery capture you end up with a the kind of a, a black hole we'll shift over to an ir measurement to, to take a look at the arctic but as you can see we have quite a lot of open water still at present and this open water is helping to fuel the polar amplification that we're seeing as heat radiates off of the surfaces of those exposed oceans. I'd also like to point out that we are still seeing quite a lot of wildfire activity in Siberia with wildfires in the range of the 62 degree north latitude line in parts of eastern Siberia drilling down. You can see the plumes coming off of some of these fires. They, they, they still look rather intense in, in this satellite imagery. And for this time of year, it's you usually start to see the wildfires really start to tamp down in the Arctic. But uh, well, and this isn't in the Arctic, this is in Siberia. Uh, so, so in the far northern regions uh, of the northern hemisphere. But we still have some pretty intense wildfires ongoing. It is worth noting that, that there are hot spots indicated in this NASA shot that are still in the Arctic at the 69 degree north latitude line, which, which crosses the Arctic Circle. So wildfires still burning in the Arctic and wide open areas of water enhancing the, the polar amplification pattern where we're seeing high temperature anomalies in the Arctic into early fall. So thank you for joining me and I'll be chatting with you soon.